This video is on numerical measures for summarizing quantitative data. Before we get started, we need to look at the distinction between a parameter and a statistic. A parameter is a single value, a number that summarizes some characteristic of a population, whereas a statistic is a single value that summarizes some characteristic of a sample from a population. Below are some parameters and the corresponding symbols and the statistics. We use capital N to represent the number of data values in a population of data, and lowercase n to represent the number of data values in a sample from a population. The Greek letter mu is used to represent the mean of the population, whereas x bar is used to represent the mean of a sample from the population. Sigma squared represents the population variance, s squared the sample variance, sigma the population standard deviation, and s the sample standard deviation. Now we'll look at our first measure of center. The mean is a measure of center, and you can think of the mean as the balance point of the data. For example, in the ruler pictured, there are coins on the ruler. Suppose I wanted to take a marker and balance the ruler on the marker. The place that I would have to put the marker would have to be the balance point, and that would be at the mean of the data, as shown below. Here's another example. So in this data set, we see that the mean is already recorded at a value of 3. So that's the balance point. Let's see why. We have three data values that are exactly at the mean. We've got two data values that are one unit above the mean, and that's balanced out by two data values that are one unit below the mean. There's one data value two units above the mean, and that's balanced out by one data value two units below the mean. Now suppose we took the two values at 4 and moved them to 7, and the one value at 5 and moved that to 8. What would that do to the position of our balance point? Well, let's explore that. The balance point here would be 4. We see that three of our data values are one unit below the mean of 4, two data values are two units below, and one data value is three units below. So the total deviations from the mean of 4 are 10 below the mean. Now to offset that, we have two data values that are 3 units above the mean, and one data value that's 4 units above the mean, for a total of 10 above the mean and 10 below the mean. Our next example is test scores from a sample of 12 students on a recent test. If we let x equal the score in the test, then x sub i represents each of the different individual scores, 72, 88, down to the twelfth one of 98. Here's a graph of the data. Try to visualize where you think the mean or the balance point of this set of data would be. The mean is the sum of the observations in a data set divided by the number of observations. So our symbol for a sample mean is x bar. This symbol means to sum up x sub i means each of the individual values, x1, x2, x3, all the way down to x12, and n is the number of data values in our sample of data. So for this particular data set, the sample mean x bar, if I summed up all these scores, I'd get 1014. There's 12 data values, so our mean of this sample of data is 84.5. We can see this on the graph below, that th this is where the data set would balance. The mean of this data is 84.5. Now we say that the mean is sensitive to extreme values. What do we mean by that? Well, suppose we notice that the person that got the lowest score in this test earned a score of 68. Suppose that person instead of 68 earned a score of 0. How would that affect the mean? Well, that would move the mean down from 84.5 to 78.9. The mean is sensitive to extreme values because every individual data value is used, is factored in when I calculate the mean. The next measure of center we'll look at is the median. The median is the middle value of a set of data when it is arranged in, in order of size. So here we have 12 data values, so there's no data value right in the middle, so what we need to do is take the two middle values, 85 and 86, and average them to get a median of 85.5. We say that the median is resistant to extreme values. Now, let, let's take a look at the example we used before, where the person that scored the lowest on the test, the 68, instead earned a score of 0. 
we see that that's not going to affect the median at all because the median is a positional value. So the median is still between 85 and 86 or 85.5. Next we'll look at measures of variability or spread. The range is the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value of a data set. So in this case we calculate the range by subtracting 68 from 98 to get 30. Again the range is a single number, it's the difference between the maximum and minimum values. The range is sensitive to extreme values. This should make sense because if I have an extreme value it's at either end of the data set the minimum or maximum, and they're the values used to calculate the range. Another measure of variability is the interquartile range, or IQR. The IQR is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. So recall that the position of the median was the average of 85 and 86. The third quartile value is the middle of the upper half of the data set. And since I have an even number of values above the median, I see that Q3 is the average of 90 and 90, or a value of 90. Q1 is the middle of the bottom half of the data. So in this case, the first quartile is the average of 78 and 80, or 79. So my inner quartile range is the value of Q3, the third quartile, 90, minus Q1 of 79. So my inner quartile range is 11. The IQR is resistant to extreme values. Think about it. It's calculated by taking the third quartile and subtracting the value of the first quartile, and those values are buffered from the extreme ends of the data. The next measure of variability or spread that we'll look at is the standard deviation. So here's our set of data. The standard deviation shows the average deviation of the individual values in my data set from the mean of the data. Recall that the mean for this set of data was 84.5. So the first thing we need to do to calculate the standard deviation is to find the difference between each data value and the mean of the distribution. Notice that the first value is negative because 72 is 12.5 units below the mean of 84.5, whereas 88 has a positive value because it's above the mean. Now if I sum up all the deviations from the mean, I should expect to get a sum of zero. This makes sense because the mean is the balance point of a set of data. Well, for this reason, if the sum of the deviations from the mean is always going to equal zero, then this would not be a good measure of variability because regardless of our data, we'd always get a sum of zero. So what we want to do is take in the magnitudes of each of these values, regardless of whether they're positive or negative. One way we might do this is squaring each deviation before we sum them up. So negative 12.5 squared yields a value of 156.25, 3.5 squared yields a value of 12.25, etc. So now our sum of our squared deviations is 859. So the first value we're going to look at is the variance. The variance is the average squared deviation. Now the word average is in quotes because when we get an average we know that we divide by the number of data values in our set of data. The sample variance, we divide by one less when we get it. So, and then the standard deviation, we want to take the square root of the variance so that our measure of variability is in the same units as our measure of center instead of squared units. The standard deviation and variance are sensitive to extreme values. That should make sense to you because both of them include the mean in their calculation, and as we saw, the mean is sensitive to extreme values. The average squared deviation or variance is calculated as such. So we use S sub X squared, so the variance of all the X's is take the first X data value, X1, find its distance from the mean and square it, add to that the second value's deviation from the mean squared, all the way to the last one, and divide it by the number of data values minus one. To find the standard deviation, which is the average distance of individual observations in a set of data from the mean of data, we just take the square root of the variance. So here's our formula for standard deviation. Now, which measure of center and variability do we use when we're describing a set of quantitative data? 
Well, that depends. If our data is fairly symmetric with no extreme skewness or outliers, we want to use our, the mean as our measure of center and the standard deviation as our measure of variability or spread. However, if the data set is extremely skewed or contains outliers, the mean and standard deviation would both be highly affected by those values. So we want to use a resistant measure of center and variability. So in this case, we use the median as our measure of center and the inner quartile range as our measure of variability or spread. The last thing we'll look at is how to summarize quantitative data of a single variable when it's given as frequency data. So we'll use this as our example. In a company with 142 employees, 40 of the employees earn $28,000 a year, 52 earn $32,000 a year, and 50 earn $45,000 per year. Now I could list out 28,040 times and 50, 32,050 times, etc., but that would be quite tedious it's much more efficient to list it in a frequency table. So how do we find the mean and standard deviation of the salaries for the employees in this country company when it's given to us in a frequency table? Well let's take a look at how to do that first on the TI Inspire. First you want to open a list and spreadsheet and we want to name our variable so I called it salary and put the three values that the variable takes on 28,000, 32,000, and 45,000 and then in another column put their corresponding frequencies and again I want to name that list. Then I want to hit the menu key go to number 6 statistics then number 1 stack calculations and then number 1 one variable statistics. Then a dialog box will come up and ask me the number of lists. This is a misnomer. I really wish the Inspire said number of variable lists because it appears to us we have two lists here, but only one of them represents a variable, salary. So our number of variable list is one. So if we click on OK, next comes up a dialog box where we can choose, if we click on the triangle, we can we can choose the, the name list for our X variable, which in this case was salary, and then we click on the triangle below for the frequency list, which we had called FREQ. Next we click OK, and we get the summary statistics for, for our frequency data. Notice that the mean, $35,450.70, would be calculated as such. We had 40 instances of 28,000 plus 52 of 32,000, etc., divided by the total number of 142 to obtain our sample mean. The standard deviation, each salary's deviation from the mean squared, and we have 40 of those, etc., divided by the number of data values minus 1, and we can see from the Inspire printout and here that our standard deviation is $7,244.05. If you're asked to explain what the standard deviation means in this context, you could say that on average the individual employees at this company's salary deviate from the mean salary of $35,450.70 by about $7,244.05.